back in 2001, I was sitting watching television, something on Cartoon Network, I think it was even Ed, Ed and Eddie, and I noticed a trailer to a game. The soundtrack was very interesting. The song, Will You Walk Away, is now basically synonymous with this game. But it was interesting. It was seeing all these Disney movies, these villains, all teaming up, and some guy who looked like... i never seen a character like that. This was pre-anime day, so uh, humor me. Closest thing I could say is he looked like Hiro from Endless Waltz. That's how limited my selection was. But... Saw the trailer and looked really good. This, besides bowling, which was a game given to me by uh, my Uncle Bob, was the first game I actually got for the PlayStation 2. And it was also the first game I ever used a memory card for. I didn't have one for the longest time until my grandmother saw me keep trying to replay the game and then she eventually got me the memory card. I didn't know such a thing existed because I was used to the Nintendo days of just saving onto the disc itself. Kingdom Hearts 1 is not the best game in the series. In fact, if you were to ask most people which one is their favorite, this doesn't even come remotely close to the conversation, except some people like this because it's basically a Disney plot with some Final Fantasy characters versus what it would eventually become where the spectrum is flipped and it's more of a Final Fantasy plot with Disney characters. You'll see when we get to the later videos. But with all that being said, Kingdom Hearts 1 holds a special place in my heart. Yes, the camera was janky though, all hell and back, and even in the remix version, which I got sitting over there for later videos, it's very apparent that this was not the best outing they had. But for what they had at the time, and for what they did, it was amazing. When you grew up as a kid, especially in my era, the 80s, 90s, and even, you could say, almost early 2000s, you grew up with a lot of the Disney films, all of your animated ones, your Alice in Wonderlands, your Robin Hood, Sword in the Stone, Great Mouse Detective, Aladdin, Peter Pan. I could continue, but you get the idea. So we always wanted to as a kid, at least me and all my friends and everyone at school would want to be part of that. We would pretend we were the characters or hanging out with them. And this game allowed us for that possibility to happen. And that's the one thing I will give this game so much credit, and even the other ones, not so much in some other cases, but you feel like you're playing through the movie, you feel like you're a part of it, like you're intricate, you're fighting alongside Aladdin and Tarzan, you're trying to stop the Mad Queen and, you know, from Alice in Wonderland, and trying to find all these clues to help Alice not get her head cut off, you're trying to outsmart the Cheshire Cat, but he's always one step ahead, and all these Disney villains are united for a common cause to defeat you. It was glorious. But, that's not even just to mention the beginning. The opening cinematic still holds up well, even on my old PlayStation 2, as you see here, and the uh, HD TV, which does not transfer well with the AV cords, let me tell you. But... It still looks beautiful, and it's still breathtaking. The soundtrack is still magnificent. And not very rarely do you hear a lot of, you know, games to get that praise, except if you're a JRPG, which this is not, but you could say it almost is. Action-oriented at best. The beginning is so great and so atmospheric that, no joke, my younger cousin... Granted, we were really little around this point. Like I said, this is early 2002, and she was younger than me. So... She was legitimately, like, on edge with the opening and terrified from the opening sequence so much that I still don't know how, but I guess the music was that good for her and the uh, atmosphere was that great. She uh, couldn't play this game until about a year and a half later, so kind of get a good laugh out of that, but uh, she ended up playing it and she enjoys it too. Maybe not to the same extent I do. We haven't talked about this game in years, and I'll get to that a little more once I get done with uh, my recoded review. Yeah. Anyway, Kingdom Hearts 1, like I said, beautiful game. Even playing on this day, as much as I love this, and this is not my original copy, I had the original copy and I loaned it to somebody and they lost it. Thankfully, my brother, you rock, Sean, was actually able to get me a spare copy of this game and I've been able to play it again on the PlayStation 2 and get almost all my old data back because I had perfect that game except for beating Sephiroth, so that was upsetting. But... Topic for another day, and yeah, I'm not joking. When I said Final Fantasy characters, you will see not only Disney, but Final Fantasy, because this is a joint project with Disney and Square Enix. So, one minute you're talking with Donald Duck and Goofy, the next minute you're fighting uh, Squall Lionheart, or you're 
freaking fighting Yuffie and Aerith, who should be dead, but I ain't gonna knock, she's enjoyable in this. And these characters will persist throughout the rest of the game. And it's funny, looking back at it in hindsight, playing this game as a solo, you can see all the little pieces that were left behind that you could totally see would build on the story that it was. And that's what really hooked us. But even before that, I give Disney this credit. They were planning this far ahead because I've never seen this in another game where if you beat this game on the hardest difficulty in the original version, you actually got a bonus scene at the end. That's correct. You actually got a little preview of events to come and it hooked people. But it wasn't leading us to Kingdom Hearts 2. It would lead us to our next game, which I'll get to in a minute. But this game, with all its faults, still holds a breathtaking place in my heart with some of the best boss fights I've seen, in the sense of just they feel like they were ripped straight from the movie. When you're fighting Jafar, you have to destroy the lamp because he's invulnerable because he's a genie. When you're fighting Oogie Boogie, you gotta outsmart his little death traps and death machines. When you're fighting Captain Hook, it literally is a sword fight, so you gotta maneuver around them, because hitting them straight on, not a good tactic. Which this game also does very well. In the beginning, you can have a multiple set of questions, which if you're not paying attention, or if you're a little kid, you don't know. You think, oh, okay, I'll pick the sword. Sword is strong, and I'll answer these questions. I don't know what the point is. But everything you do has a consequence. The weapon you choose sets your skill loadout. So if you pick the sword, like every person on the planet did, congrats! You don't get guard to level 37, and yeah, you don't have the ability to guard and attack. So I hope you're good, really fast-paced, and being able to dodge everybody, because otherwise you're gonna get wrecked. Especially in later games where they hit you with what I like to call the wombo combo, where, oh look, here's my health bar, here's my health! No, I'm dead. My friends heard me once try to beat this game on Critical, and they were laughing their head off as how bad I was playing, and they could comment below if they wanted. But, yeah, this game's not exactly easy if you play on the hardest difficulty, and there's ways to kind of handicap yourself to really make it a true experience. There's people out there who do the whole level one runs, they do uh, no-hit combos, they don't do the, uh, what are they called, infinite frames, I think is what it's called, or instant frames, where basically if you get hit, because it's doing a frame that you can't get hit, which, when my brother figured that out, I'm like, defeats the fun of it. And this game is really fun. I enjoy visiting all the worlds. It's really not one I have an issue with, except for the motion controls in uh, Atlantica. Because that's, you know, three dimensions, because you're in the water, so you gotta get used to that. Though it does set you up very well when you get to Peter Pan's universe, and you can actually gain the ability to fly. And you actually do get that ability later in the game, but Super Glide is what it's called. But, yeah, all this, I haven't even gotten to basically the plot of it, and with the plot, is actually the most important thing about this entire game. You start off with your three main characters, Sora, Riku, and Kairi, and basically their journey. Their island gets invaded by the Heartless. Yeah, if that wasn't Disney enough, tell me what is, isn't. But they get invaded, their house and home gets destroyed, their world gets obliterated, and they're separated, and they all fall from one prey to an X. Sora gains this weapon called the Keyblade, as seen, uh right here, the Kingdom Key, and you see Riku's uh, Way to the Dawn, I believe is what it's referred to at this point, or it could still be Dream Eater, I'm not entirely certain, but they have to go on their own journey to find their friends and get back home. Along the way, some are tempted to darkness, some are able to save others, and some are willing to make the ultimate sacrifice, even in the end. And the end of this game, if this game had ended the way it did, it would have been horrible. In the sense that it would have felt your heart be destroyed because the three friends aren't together. They aren't. They don't get together basically for like another five years. But had stuff for another day. So would I recommend these games? Well, you gotta know where it starts. And a lot of people say, "Oh, you gotta go in chronological order. You gotta play Birth by Sleep first. To whoever says that, you're a an idiot. Look, there's one or two variations I say you can switch if you want for a bigger effect, but the majority of the time you want to play the games as they were released because the information they released is released as they're released. With one note being very important, and I'll get to that one when I get to 358 in Kingdom Hearts 2. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, yes, there was some change between Kingdom Hearts 1 and, okay, move over 2, and... The 1.5 Remix. Yeah, so... 
Funny story here. Apparently, I wasn't aware of this until somebody on YouTube pointed it out, and I'm like, huh? But yes, the game between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 1.5 did get changed around a little bit. For one, they tried, keyword tried, to fix the camera, and uh, still the interface is garbage. Like I said, the biggest problem with this game is the camera. That's it. Everything else is really enjoyable. It's just that camera's going to make you want to break up a table. But besides that, um, something they later also changed in Kingdom Hearts 2 is they censored around a lot of things. Uh, some of the dialogue got changed around a little bit, some of the implications got worked. They did add an extra scene into the 1.5 to tie everything more together so it was a bit more of a coherent plot between um, Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. And they removed the character's underwear. Yeah, what are the characters from the Final Fantasy people you get to meet uh, on the island besides Sora, Riku, and uh, Kairi is Waka, Titus, and Selfie. I think that was the name. Was it Selfie? Selfie. It's been a while since I played that first one. <laughs> and honestly, that should tell you how important she is to the plot. I don't even remember her freaking name. I think it's Selfie, but... Yeah, uh, because she's wearing a sundress and she uses a jump rope as a weapon... Hang with me now, it gets weirder. She happens to do fan service flash, which anyone who knows anything about anime knows, I'm not going to go into detail. So, to fix that, they basically made her look like she was uh, one of those old peg figures where basically her dress morphs into one solid piece. Yeah, it makes no sense to me, I'm sorry, but people be weird, yo. More importantly, who was actually trying to figure that out? You should all be ashamed of yourself, and I'll be more ashamed of the programmer and freaking Kingdom Hearts 2 when I bring up that little change as well. Seriously, you guys, look, I try to defend Japan as much as possible, because not only did they bring us games like this, and all the other ones over there, and Fairy Fencer, and Quintet, and freaking Legends of Heroes, and all that good stuff, you make it tough for me not to think you all have some issues. Really? Ugh. Yeah. Like I said, I know somebody in the comment section would have mentioned it, so I'm just letting it go now. Personally, I don't care for the chain, care about the changes. The gameplay is still the same. They don't mess with the story. They don't mess with the characters like you would in a Fire Emblem game. So far be it for me to be upset like some people rage about. Ugh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I seriously recommend this, guys. And Kingdom Hearts One was a big hit. It spawned enough of a talk and rumors. Everyone was looking forward to Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2. We wanted Kingdom Hearts 2 so bad. And then we heard a rumor that the next game wasn't going to be Kingdom Hearts 2, but it was going to be a game for the Game Boy. Now, usually when you hear something like this, you think spin-off. You think, oh, this is filler. We've all seen a cartoon where the character goes off on a beach and they'll do talk about something and it's never brought up again. Or we'll go to subplot A. Oh, I got this new powerful weapon. I'll never use it again. Yeah, that didn't happen. Cleverly, and some could say this is painful, and especially for a wallet, it can be until, like I said, the .5 remixes came out so they could have all the games in one. But they cleverly actually made all this stuff a coherent plot, and we would start to see the world would expand and grow into something that we weren't ready for at the time it was anyway. We just thought we'd continue along, enjoy our little Disney adventure, hang out with certain characters. Little did we know that the world was starting to get a lot bigger. And we only have nobody to blame for it. Yeah, all the Kingdom Hearts fans, I have to make that joke eventually. Anyway, guys, that's it for Kingdom Hearts 1. And tune in next time where I talk about the controversy, the greatness, the weirdness, and just the... Uh, dichotomy that would come from Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories and Rechain of Memories. As always, I'm Kevin Riley signing off, and I'll see you all next time. Later.